Judiciary of the Republic of Armenia to Republic of India from 2021 to 2023. Head of the Bordering Countries Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Armenia. In 2016, October involved as the short-term observer in the parliamentary elections of Georgia in the OSCE, ODIHR election observation mission. In 2022, Secretary of the Armenian Iranian Intergovernmental Joint Commission, Ambassador Afyan. He is a PhD from Tehran University and an author of several publications. So, please come on stage and request you limit your speech to 20 minutes. Thank you. It is truly an honor to address this esteemed gathering here at the Geopolitical Conference in Udaipur. I extend my sincere gratitude to the organizers for providing me with, the, with this invaluable pl platform to share insights into the dynamic and flourishing relationship between Armenia and India. Moreover, I am deeply appreciative uh, of the warm hospita hospitality extended to me during my time in this lovely city. Armenia's relationship with India uh, transcends merit diplomatic ties. It is founded upon a shared history, deep-rooted civilizational connections, and a mutual commitment to strengthening bilateral cooperation across various domains. As ambassador of Armenia, I'm privileged to witness the remarkable strides uh, we have uh, made together, particularly in recent years. And it is with great enthusiasm uh, that I stand before you to reflect uh, on our journey to, of collaboration and partnership. Over the past few years, the political dialogue between Armenia and India has reached in unprecedented heights, characterized by high-level meetings, visits and engagements, and underscored the mutual commitment of our leaders to deepen ties and explore new avenues of cooperation. From the meeting between Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan at the United Nations General Assembly to our recent engagements and international platforms, uh, platforms like the Munich Security Conference, our leaders have laid the groundwork for an ambitious agenda aimed at enhancing cooperation across various sectors. I would like to highlight Indian's Foreign Minister Dr. Jai Shankar's historic visit to Armenia in 2021. Uh, and Minister Min Zoyan's subsequent visits to India in 2022 and 2023 for the participation at the Raizinha Dada. The mechanism of political consultations, discussions within the Intergovernmental Com Commission and interparliamentary diplomacy have provided crucial platforms for comprehensive discussions of bilateral, regional and international issues. These mechanisms not only foster mutual understanding, but also pave the way for tangible outcomes and concrete actions that benefit our citizens and contribute to regional stability and prosperity. In the realm of trade and economic cooperation, both Armenia and India are committed to intensifying business-to-business -business interactions, leveraging our respective strengths and expertise to foster closer economic ties. Initiatives such as uh, the Global Maritime India Summit and the Vibrant Gujarat Summit have provided invaluable opportunities to explore collaboration in infrastructure, development, trade uh, relations and investment opportunities. The recent participation of Armenian delegations in these summits underscores <coughs> our determination to tap into the vast potential for economic cooperation between our two nations. From the point of view uh, of the development of uh, trade and economic relations, as well as the promotion of tourism, I would like to emphasize the importance of regular uh, direct flights between the two countries. We hope to witness the implementation of flights in, of Indian and Armenian airlines in the near future. Tourism and cultural exchange play a pivotal role in enhancing people-to-people -people contacts and fostering mutual understanding between our nations. Armenians' rich cultural heritage and breathtaking landscapes offer exciting opportunities for Indian tourists, while India's diverse cultural tapestry appeals to Armenian travelers. Initiatives such as the mural paintings of Ajanta, Armenian Indian Museum Project, and the collaborations in the film industry highlight our commitment to promoting cultural exchange and deepening mutual appreciation of our respective cultures. Education has been a cornerstone of Armenian-Indian relations, with thousands of Indian students pursuing various disciplines in Armenia. 
Initiatives such as the Academic City Project in Armenia aim to create a modern environment for high-quality higher education and research, fostering collaboration among academia, industry, and services. The success of these initiatives underscores our shared commitment to investing in the future generation and fostering innovation and excellence in education. Discussions on labor affairs and social cooperation further highlight the depth of our partnership with both nations exploring avenues for joint regulation, skill development and employment opportunities. By working together in these areas, we aim to create an enabling environment for economic growth, social development and shared prosperity. During the recent visit of Minister of Labor and Social Affairs of Armenia to India within the framework of raising a dialogue 2024, fruitful discussions took place between Armenian and Indian counterparts on various aspects of cooperation in labor and social affairs. I would like to inform you that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Armenia plans to hold the Yerevan Dialogue Workshop in September, to which we kindly invite you. I should mention that cooperation in the defense field between Armenia and India has seen significant progress in recent years. Armenia has shown keen interest in India's investments in defense and technology, leading to fruitful contacts and participation in defense expositions. Armenian defense ministers' visit in 2022 played a pivotal role in strengthening bilateral ties and discussions with Indian Defense Minister highlighted satisfaction with current cooperation levels and explored avenues for expansion. Recently, Deputy Minister of Defense of Armenia held meetings with high-ranking Indian officials to enhance sectoral cooperation. Institutions like the National Defense College of India have also contributed to strengthening ties with collaboration initiated during an East delegation visit to Armenia. Both countries have actively involved their security councils in bilateral discussions. Uh, with the visit of the Secretary of Armenia's Security Council to India in 2023, focusing on regional security devel developments and potential collaborations, including in the space industry. Overall, uh, the evolving defense cooperation between Armenia and India underscores their commitment to enhancing mutual security interests uh, and regional stability. By the way, Armenia has signed the framework agreement on the establishment of the International Solar Alliance. So, ladies and gentlemen, amid uh, these advancements and uh, opportunities, it is imperative to address the recent developments in the South Caucasus region, the normalization process of relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and the peace process. The Republic of Armenia is committed to the peace agenda and is making all constructive efforts to sign the treaty on the normalization of relations with Azerbaijan based on mutual recognition of territorial integrity on the further delimitation of borders. Of course, you know, and it is no secret, that the 1991 Alma-Ata Declaration is particularly key in these matters, the declaration by which the former republics of the Soviet Union recognized the international interstate borders between the newly independent republics based on the former administrative <coughs> borders of the former Soviet republics. These are the fundamental principles, sovereignty and territorial integrity, on which we envision uh, peace and harmony in the South Caucasus and much wider region. However, despite <coughs> our earnest efforts, challenges persist in the negotiation process. We have encountered reluctance from our Azerbaijani counterparts regarding references to the Alma Ata Declaration in the draft, the draft peace treaty. While Armenia remains committed to the peace agenda and continuous negotiations with Azerbaijan, it is essential for both parties to demonstrate the necessary political will to finalize the trade. Armenia is eager to embrace new logistic and transit routes, recognizing the potential economic benefits for all nations involved. Historically, Armenia has always been at the crossroads connecting the north to the south and the west to the east. Today as well, Armenia is ready to serve as a connecting hub for such interactions. As a landlocked country, with its borders from the east and the west, in blockade for the last three decades, Armenia is a staunch advocate of promoting inclusive and equitable regional and cross-border connectivity. 
For the stability of the South Caucasus uh, and the wider region, we are um, blocking uh, of regional uh, infrastructures is also of key importance based on the principles of respect of the sovereignty and jurisdiction of states, reciprocity and equality. The crossroad of peace project introduced by the government of Armenia as an <coughs> important component of Armenian, Armenia's peace agenda of its crucial importance uh, for the opening of all trade and transport communications in the region. This initiative premises not only economic advantages for the region and beyond, but also holds the potential and significantly contribute to regional stability through increased trade, interdependence and connectivity. Armenia enjoys traditionally warm and neighborly relations with neighbors Georgia and Iran. Based on a number of shared realities, shared borders, historic and cultural ties, and mutual economic interests. Strategic partnership with Georgia, time-tested strong relations with Iran, and our growing trade and business ties with the Gulf countries that are home of vibrant Armenian communities have the potential to greatly contribute to bringing the crossroad of peace to life and fostering diversification through connectivity. As for the normalization process with Turkey, the two countries have appointed special envoys. There have been discussions on a higher level as well. Many things are agreed upon and hopefully will be implemented in the near future. I would like to emphasize that the Republic of Armenia is interested in developing its bilateral relations from the American continent to the Far East. The region, and probably the larger region, is passing through very serious transformations, including my country. In our case, it's also an internal affair. The people of Armenia have chosen the democratic path to build and develop the society, and we have proven this choice several times through, the, through elections, but also through the uh, process of strengthening our democratic institutions. In this process, the European Union and the United States are the main supporters of the international institutional reforms in Armenia. Apart from our bilateral agenda, Armenia values its cooperation with India within the UN and multilateral forum. Our partnership holds immense significance in the realm of international diplomacy and we remain committed to further strengthening ties for the mutual benefit of our nations and the broader region. India's recent achievements on the global stage, including the successful presidencies in the UN Security Council and the G20, are a testament of its leadership and commitment to addressing present global challenges. Furthermore, India's efforts to amplify the voices of the Global South <coughs> through platforms such as the Voice of the Global, uh, global South summits are commendable. These initiatives provide a much needed 